Alrighty, folks. I'm not sure where I am in my sequence of videos right now, but we are back on the 54. I uh, ordered some intake gaskets. We got those in, so we can actually bolt our intake down. Um, I still haven't found or really hunted around to do my one sensor that I need. Not a big deal. Uh, we did get our Amazon gears, so we got gears, we got some pinion shims, we got like whatever it is, like to set up the gear set, we got that. Uh, we went with 342s, that's going to be our gear combo. It's, uh, I guess it was like on Amazon, it was like new used, if that makes sense. It looks like it's been installed, but never run. That saved me a whole bunch of money, so I'm cool with that. Chances are I'll goof this up somehow and it's going to howl anyway, so. <laughs> but I would like to, we're going to set small goals for this round. I want to get the gears in, uh, axles, I want the brakes bled. Maybe we'll start with the exhaust, get the drive shaft on. I think that's a good set of goals. We'll see where we go from there. Uh, dun, dun. Other than that, we have, yeah, I don't know, we're getting there. We got lots of stuff to do, but that's, uh, I think that's a good start. This went down. This is where the terminology link and locker. So in this case, this is an HTP locker. Uh, <laughs> basically, some guys will just weld the gears. Um, I don't know. I don't have luck. It, it just usually the welds break and then gears break and you get a pile of parts in there. So I just booger everything to everything, and uh, this is what you end up with. It's not pretty, it's not a smart thing to do. Whatever you do, do not weld your pin to anything because you'll never get your axles out if you are welding in the car. See, what I did is I welded everything. I took my die grinder, got all the little crumbs off and stuff because all you need is a couple bits of those to go, uh, I shouldn't say bits, but you know, like the, the, the slaggy little balls, like little, whatever, some garbage off your weld. If that splatters around, goes through your gears, you're in bad shape. So, anyways, what you do there, I weld it here, I weld it to the case. That means this carrier, when it's all said and done, is garbage. Um, you can buy a locker where your spiders come out, you can drop them in. I think by the time I get them here, it's probably 150 bucks to $200 for one. A locker is like $500 around here. Even a lunchbox locker is like... $500. I know guys say like Detroit locker or um, I don't know if it's an air locker they're using or something where they can turn it on and off. That is like crazy money up here. So I do this. It's dumb, but it works. It gives you a, essentially is what a spool. Um, you can buy it where you can buy a spool where this whole section is basically this. So I don't know. I'm not going to blab on about it. All I'm going to say is if a feller's doing that in a vehicle and your gears are exposed, man, like, I don't know, you gotta put something flammable so all the splatter that comes doesn't end up in there. You're probably smart to get, um, uh, you know, like that nozzle dip for your welders, that anti-splatter. Coat everything you don't want weld 
or splatter to stick to. Spray it on your gears, spray it on everything if you're doing this in the car and be mindful that you don't cook your bearings because that would be bad and just defeat the whole purpose. Anyways, that's my two cents about it. I, <laughs> it's not the right thing to do. Like, don't, don't kid me. It's, uh, there's better things to do, but this cost me a couple minutes of welding and now I have a spool. This is going to be hard on tires, hard on axles. Yeah, all the things a guy shouldn't do, but this cost me zero dollars. So anyways, um, clean that cool a little more. I'm going to pull this off. This has one shim on there right now. So I'm just blindly going to try that shim with this bearing. We'll press it together. We're going to smack it into the car and see if uh, how close we are with the gear mesh. That's got to go on here. We kind of do that, clean these up, put some Loctite on it, bolt that together. This gear set, look at the difference, eh? This is like I say, a 273, that's a 342. So, interesting, eh? Okay, uh, yeah, I bought a puller at auction. I'm gonna give it a try. I mean, the easiest way to do that is put it on the press, but uh, I bought a little hydraulic puller at auction so we're gonna give that well this will work to take it off i don't know about putting it on Ooh. There. not the best place for it it's a big bugger i had one like this in the other shop it's a hydraulic puller but what we want is this this will pull it off this thing actually is you twist it and it's got a hydraulic cylinder on it so up doing is you use this you use this this kind of sandwich these things together and uh, we can or this one can I do that no <laughs> anyways we're gonna pull it off this needs to go here we'll catch under that bearing we'll throw some long arms my puller you'll see it works pretty slick if you don't have a big press my press honestly is faster, but I just want to try it out, make sure this, <laughs> see how this one works.
I can already tell that this thing's just out to lunch because you can hear by that it's gonna howl like crazy. Uh, I hate setting gears up. I wish I knew somebody who could do it. <laughs> I'm stuck doing it myself. So I'm gonna be spending the rest of the night trying to get these to mesh. So now what I gotta do is pull it apart. I gotta pull that pinion out. We gotta put a new shim on it. We'll put it in. I should paint it though, just to see what it's doing. But yeah, I'll do that first. I'm not gonna explain how to do this because I really don't know what I'm doing. I just fumble and figure it out and hope it doesn't make noise. Well, I haven't filmed too much because I've been having this in and out. I'm on my third time pulling this one out. You can't see, I got the wrong paste, but I've just added I just keep adding a little bit of shims. I don't really know quite the depth that a guy needs other than you gotta put it all together and go. All I can feel is my pattern doesn't seem terrible, but it needs to go deeper, if that makes sense. So to get it to go further into the gear, you need to add some shim here to get some depth into it. Again, I'm not gonna get into much detail how to do this because I really am not very good at doing this. I just hope I put it together and it doesn't make a lot of noise. That's kind of, how I roll. <laughs> the less noise it makes, the better. Anyways, when those go mashing together, the idea is on this, well not on the back, but on the front side. I don't know if you can see my patterns. In the paint, it's not too bad. You can see them there. They're not terrible. I needed to go a little bit deeper. And by deeper, I mean, oh, is it too deep already? Oh, dang it. No. Let me think here. This goes in. Oh. I think it's too deep. Ah, darn it. I did the wrong way. <laughs> I gotta pull shims out. All right. Dang it. I gotta do the opposite of what I just did. Okay. Anyways, I'm gonna pull a bunch of shims. We're gonna put it together. I'll walk it around in any hopes I have it close. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, damn it. Well, at least I didn't put it all together. Because this, when it sits on here, when this rides on here, the, the further back, this one's in there. Do I have this right? Oh, no, it's got to go back. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a very smart person with this. I'm just not afraid of failing. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I gotta screw up a lot and then it'll, things will make sense. Let me put it together again and I'll bring you folks back and we'll see how good or bad it is. All right, well you can see on the white, I'm not bad, I feel it should come back a little bit more. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody's gonna say I'm doing it completely wrong and you're probably right. I have the wrong pace. I got some... Like I figured this would work, but... No. Nope. Well, it works. Not so great though. Uh, I don't know. I haven't had this for a while. I'm about to send it and just see how it goes. We'll see. We'll try it out. I don't know. Doesn't look bad. I've had worse. <laughs> Anyways, we're gonna put this back up. See, what I gotta do now is my pin goes up here. So we're gonna slide the axles in. We're gonna put our lock pins back in. 
push them out, push our pin in, that'll hold our axles from falling out. And then we can do our, that's this side here actually. This is where the bolt goes in. This pin goes through. The pin pushes the axles out and then these little clips go on the end of the axle here. So when you push it through, you push this, then then the axle comes back out and it kind of locks in place so that pin that goes through keeps these axles from coming out. Like it stops these clips from falling out, if that makes sense. Because in the differential you can see there's a little indent in here. So I'll grab one of these clips. When the clip is in, it'll sit flush like that. Trying to explain to some of the folks who uh, haven't been in a differential before. Not that I'm a perfect person to explain anything, but okay. Doke. Let's put this together, then we can throw our drums on, and then we can commence brake bleeding. So I gotta address a few things. <laughs> so I remember doing all this and then people figured that when I, I made my new blocks, I moved the diff. The diff was always moved. So the drive shaft's still the right length. And that is good. Brakes are in, that's done. I still have to deal with the emergency brake. Not feeling it. What's the second one? Uh, some folks are mentioning, cause I know I'm kinda a video ahead. My speed holes, I'm gonna have to address and put some plates. Uh, people feel that's gonna screw with uh, my rad and you do have a point i like somebody's term out there when they said that uh, air's lazy and it's just going to want to go one way so we'll have to address that uh but let's do brakes first we'll get a little wind out of here get some brakes working and then and then i don't know i'll try to do brakes tonight that kind of kicked my arse so kind of over over that <laughs> all right i'm doing bleeding brake duty i wanted to use my little tool up there but the darn thing doesn't have the right fitting to fit on top of this fuel on top of this uh filler so i guess I'm gonna have to old school it just waiting for Ryder to come he's gonna give me a hand uh, but i'm gonna loosen these off we're gonna make a loop to bench bleed this thing well by bench bleeding i'm just going to leave it in the car we're going to cycle through it it is what it is get the bubbles out then we'll kind of come down here tap these things and uh kind of just work our way down get all the wheels start with your furthest wheel other you know you know the process so we just got to do all that yet and get that out of the way and then we'll figure out what we're going to do next that should tie up that stuff for now or get the brakes going that's the goal uh maybe we'll work on the shifter after that get that thing chopped down and moved up so we can actually somebody had a good comment on there so we'll try to shorten that thing all up i don't know if you can actually see what i'm talking about but 
see if my light works here. All right, right there. This thing here we got, and uh, if I take this, shorten this whole thing up, we can probably get this rod to go back here, miss my exhaust, and we can kind of start rigging up a shifter. Everything's very dirty and grungy under here because that tool had some generic uh, lid to put on there and it failed miserably and then just everything got brake fluid all over it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Just slowly pump. And let go. Go again. Keep doing it. That's not too bad. Okay, doke. That's good. Wasn't much in there. Well, it didn't need much is the right way to say it. Pull those out. So you got the, you picked up the car yesterday and the video yesterday? Cool. Well, that sucks. Looks like we chummed up just to have a bad wheel cylinder now. Well, that's junky. Let's see if we can pop it out. And we'll see what's going on. Let's see if this thing will let me. Oh, no. Just so it doesn't rain brake fluid forever. Just pull it back, give her a little smash. We'll pull all the parts off here and see. Come on. 
They have a half inch wrench. I think it's a half inch. Oh, it might be 7 sixteenths. Actually, give me a ratchet. Yeah, I like the electric one with the 7 sixteenths. It's a bugger to get out. <laughs> I don't know if I can get it out with all the junk still on it. A little bleeder screw. Alrighty. What do you think's in there? Maybe two seals in a spring. Of oil. Hmm. You get me a rag? Give me that one over there. I don't know. That just seems like a really bad quality. It's like garbage in it. What's that about? This looks fine. It just looks like there was garbage in it. There's all this splits on there. Uh, there's some brake clean right by that pumper. Yeah. Give me that. We'll put this back. To, we'll clean this up. Put it back together. Nope. Wrong way. Ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> All good. These things are supposed to go in. These go on there. Cup on it. Bet you it will be good now. Oop. I wonder where our other cup is. Must be in the car, eh? Well now, that was a lot of suck. I had Ryder on pumping duty. We couldn't uh, get any fluid out the back, so I thought the hoses collapsed, but ended up it was the prop valve just not wanting to bleed properly. We just kept cracking it here, then it actually started bleeding. So, the front we had no problem bleeding. Kind of did it backwards, but because I thought the line was bad. Uh, took the line apart, wouldn't take any fluid. Once that worked, we were getting fluid back there, then we were able to bleed it. We had one bad wheel cylinder here, which I don't know, I don't, couldn't tell you why, but it had uh, some gunk in there. So we just took it apart, we cleaned it out, put it back together. It's not leaking anymore, should be good. So that means we have brakes. Pedal feels good. We are all good there. Uh, I'm going to think if I'm going to try to do this or... Yeah, let's work on this shifter thing. I think we can do that pretty simple. At least that's my thought. All right, folks, it's been a while. We're getting back at this. So we're gonna go still, the goal is to do this 
It's just been lots going on. We got uh, a future. There's another LS dealio happening soon. It may or may not have to do with the square body. So I've been doing a little bit of prepping for that. Uh, we're starting to get material. Uh, I'm not sure when we have some folks there that are going to give us a hand. They're going to do the uh, framing and everything else. So waiting on them. Don't know when they're about to start, but at least the, the stuff will be here. So, um, yeah, I guess first steps first here. Uh, I'm going to dig into here. I'm going to pull this inner tube back out again so we can see this shifter linkage better and try to shorten it all up. It uh, doesn't need to do a lot of anything other than uh, shift my transmission. It's kind of the goal. So I'm thinking we're going to take some of this stuff apart. But uh, take this out, take that out. Then we got a clear shot of that thing. I think the last time I looked at this, we got the brakes all working, so that's all good. Um, we just got to work on, figure out our emergency brake stuff yet, and then, uh, huh, what else we got to do here? I don't know. All I know is I want to get this shifter done. That's the goal. Alrighty, so we cut it, was there. I feel, well you can see everything's still covered in brake fluid. It's like never ending washing all this stuff. But um, eh. The plan is to run it up to about there. And what that'll give us is a straight shot through the opening in the back there to the transmission. And then we should still be able to, well we'll keep our neutral safety and all the other jazz up in the front here. So, I don't know. Looks easy. Don't know why I didn't do that the first time around, but hey. So anyways, we're going to trim these two down. I'm going to slug it because there's a, it's actually got an open pipe in here. So I'll just find something to steel sleeve into there and we'll blitz it. It doesn't do anything other than shifting gears, so it's not that important. And we'll be able to just like, we'll clean this up a bit and just zap it on top. That is uh, the plan for that. Alrighty, so everything's welded in. Um, this thing clears more than enough room. Once it goes down, it'll clear everything over there. Uh, I'm just gonna go down and build a shifter now. I'm gonna see if I have one on the transmission or if we gotta make or cut something. Um, I don't have any way to make a bushing, so this is gonna be just a little sloppy for now. 
uh, unless I can find something that fits in there. But uh, we'll kind of run a big swanky dink down there and see what we can make happen here. Well, it doesn't look like we have any shifter. It almost looks like we don't even have a seal in there. Ah, there must be. Gotta be. I guess we'll find out really fast if we don't. Ow. Hit my head on the hoist. So anyways, we'll have to build some kind of an arm and then we're gonna have to shoot it like straight up into there. That is the plan. We'll get this nut off. I think I have still some templates on my plasma table to do some universal shifters. So let's do that. Oh, I'm gonna go find somewhere around here is my speedometer cable. We should screw that in. Get that out of the way. It'd be nice when I don't have to run a hose to each garage here. <laughs> Come on. There we go. So I found my old design. So this is kind of a universal, I can adjust it wherever I need it. If I need a longer or shorter throw, that's the idea. Anyways, from here, we will export, we'll do that, do a sheet cam, open a drawing, we will bring that one in. Now we add, oh, that looks okay. Get all of our cuts set up. File, run, same thing, untitled. We go over here. And then uh, kind of move our table over and get going here. Just got to plug it in. Oh, eventually I'm going to put a switch on there for the table side of it. All right. Um, just find a little piece of scrap right there. That should be fine. Zero everything out. Uh, load our stuff. All right, let's see what happens here. Got to turn the air on. Yeah, I'm sorry. Got to turn our air on. <laughs> Got everything happening with air. Get that on, get that on. Things happen. <laughs> I'm always bound to forget something. Alrighty, let's try this again. I think that thing bounces up and down. I've read because there's probably some moisture in the line yet. Everything will be down there. Hopefully. And hot. Most likely. Yep. I'll let that cool off and we'll uh, clean it up and test fit it. Thank you. 
right, so if you look up here, you'll see we have our neutral lockout and uh, you have to pull back to get it to go out of gear. I can't quite show you that, but if we're in here, the way the shifter is right now, it's like locked in part. If you pull back, we can go to reverse all the way down the first. And then if we go up, it'll do like a neutral lockout. I shouldn't say neutral, it'll go to neutral, but it'll keep it like a reverse lockout. Uh, I didn't quite get there. It didn't quite go, but anyways, this is here. Once I lube this thing up, everything's kind of stuck right now, but anyways, this will kind of do the old motions, do what I need it to do. So I feel it's a win. May not be 100%, but it'll do what I need. That's kind of the big goal. So we go up, it's locked in. We're stuck in park. I'm happy with that. Win. <laughs> well, I think that's as far as we're gonna get this round. I gotta do a bunch of work on that square body. I don't know, I'll give you a little sneak peek, but it doesn't help you too much. It's the white square body with the, uh, the camper on the back. That one's coming up. This motor, we're gonna have to do a bunch of work. I think Ryder and I did a whole lot, so a little a little sneak peek of what's coming up. We're uh, just kind of getting that all ready. Uh, I want to kind of just blitz through that. I've done some bartering. I got to blitz through that truck to uh, work out my debt. <laughs> but uh, the next couple videos, we're going to be working on that truck really quick. Then we'll be getting back on this thing. The next things we're going to do on this particular car is going to be... I feel the next thing I got to do is attach, like, um, address this floor. It needs to be done. I think we'll touch that up. And then from there I can work on the fuel system. And man, we're like super close. The windshield's the only thing. I'm waiting on Vava Voom. He's supposed to come out. And he apparently has a glass, so we can kind of get that all done. Hopefully that all happens before the rest of the car is ready to go, but... Um, Ah, there's lots of little bits and pieces. We gotta do the wiring. We gotta do lots of stuff on here. I feel the floors will tackle that because then if I run the fuel system, I'm not doing any welding over top of it. So that's a big one there. Anyways, I feel that's where we're gonna leave this one. I uh, want to thank you all for watching, and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Later.